on. If you go throughout Europe, you'll see a large number of the churches had winged reptilian gargoyles put on them, <laughs> including um, something that's really bizarre. They would have uh, um, people, statues of people bent over uh, what? Oh, uh, how do you describe it on television? They're bent over to taking a dump, you know. And this is on the side of a cathedral. This is on sides of churches in that were built. That the statues built naked people uh, showing their their bare bottoms. And if you ask why did these Masonic trade guilds build gargoyles and people? Uh, taking an excrement, you're told they did it for Christ. And I guess, I guess for it's, people really don't understand is that most of Christianity evolved from the Catholic religion. And the word Catholic itself means universal. And so they just went out into their areas and just absorbed all of the local religions of whatever land they were at. That's very well said. There were a number of mystery religions that bestowed their authority into the Catholic Church. For instance, the mystery religion of Dagon uh, had the, which was the fish god. And you'll notice that one of the symbols that the Christian Jews uh, today is the fish. And the Pope's hat, his mitre hat, was the crown of authority of the head of the mystery religion of uh, of Dagon. Mm -hmm. So he, he, at one point in history, was was um, given the authority to be head of that mystery religion, and um, so yeah, there's there there. Uh, the Catholic Church was a good way to also absorb a lot of the paganism, um, right? Besides being a front, um, a front for the more serious hardcore. So you mean, Fritz, when I'm driving around in my car and I see another car in front of me with the little fish symbol on the back of it, that the symbol, in reality, even though they believe it represents Christ, is really a symbol for the Dagon mystery religion? I don't think that, that you'll find Christians putting it on there because they worship Dagon. But um, uh, I... All I'm doing is, is, is saying um, a lot of these symbols have histories beyond what the Christian church thinks about. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll find a lot of, um, well, for instance, uh, I have personally with my own eyes seen a, um, a good number, or I, I don't know if good is the word for it, but I've, I've seen a number of churches with the Masonic Knights Templar logo on the side of their churches. Mm -hmm. And what logo is that? It's a cross and a crown. Cross and crown. Right. Okay. It's a particular, it, it's um, designed a certain way. Mm -hmm. And it's very uh, uh, clear that it's a Masonic symbol. And there's a lot of other symbols. I, I've seen all seeing eyes. There's there's Catholic churches that have the Illuminati all-seeing eye, you know, that's in the pyramid. Well, uh, speaking of the all-seeing eye, um, our local cable outlet, uh, basically who helps us put on this show here, Time Warner in Austin, their symbol for their corporation is an eye. It don't, isn't that kind of funny? Yes, well, uh, it, it all ties together. Um, it, it's an enormous thing. That's uh, to to person uh, to someone who hasn't been initiated into um, who hasn't studied this the the whole um, the subject is is so vast and so incredible that that uh, it's really difficult to absorb. That's why I really strongly encourage someone to begin by reading the Bloodlines of the Illuminati book where. I have the time to lay things out systematically so you can see that this thing started in antiquity. These people controlled everything back then. They never gave up control. 
although they, they have worked through trade guilds and the Masonic Lodge and other things, um, they've always had the power. They never gave up the power. And when this country was created, we thought that we were getting away from the aristocracies and the kings of Europe. But lo and behold, like I said, you know, I can document that 11 of our presidents are related to the royal family in the United Kingdom. Boy, I tell you, Fritz, this all sounds so incredible, just like you said. When you were doing research for this book, how much documentation did you actually find which supports your outlook and beliefs on the Illuminati? Well, I've done many years of research, and I was just joking with somebody that I, I was visiting uh, this morning, um, because uh, when I moved into my new house, I had been telling people I had a hundred boxes of papers, you know, documentation, newspapers and stuff that I collected. But after I had filed those away, and I counted, I had 140 boxes left. So, um, uh, a, a lot of what I have um, learned was was because I've worked for years with people that are trying to escape the Illuminati and they helped my learning curve greatly. They point in the right direction. And a lot of information is right there if we scratch below the surface. But they realize that there are very few people like me that are going to be looking in the right direction and scratching under the surface. So, um, and they don't have time to hide it all. So there is an enormous amount of information out there uh, that relates to these families. Um, and I just am the type of person to plow through enormous amounts of information. That was just, uh, uh, I guess, the gift that God gave to me. So what you're saying then, basically, Fritz, is that the information is out there, and really all you have to do is begin to search for it. Is that correct? Yes, I believe that uh, a lot of the readers, it, once they have read my Bloodlines of the Illuminati book, and then uh, once they uh, maybe have, have read some of the other books that I have and gotten a basic understanding of what's going on, they're going to start seeing these things all around them, and they can teach themselves, and they can further their understanding uh, on their own without my help. Okay, Fritz. Well, <clears throat> let's jump a little bit inside of the book, okay? I know you mentioned, as one of the Illuminati families, the Kennedy family. Now, with all of their recent tragedy in the past few decades, how can you still feel like the Kennedys are major contributors to this whole power structure? There's definitely been um, uh, so, um, some power struggles and the, the Kennedys have been on the short end of the power struggles. Um, that's true. Um, but after John F. Kennedy was assassinated um, and his brother, Ted Kennedy still was an extremely powerful senator um, because of his tenure and all of the committees he was on and everything. He was one of the most powerful men in the United States. Uh, so that immediate family, you know, continues to be called by the news media as America's royal family. But let's understand that the Kennedy bloodline is far greater than just uh, John F. Kennedy's family. Well, what do you mean, Fritz? I think most people would... If when they think of the Kennedys, they think, oh, well, you had John's father, uh, Jack, was it? And he made all his money. Uh, basically, you hear rumors that he made most of his money through prohibition, and then he made a killing off of the stock market crash. And really, that's when we start to hear about the Kennedys. Are you trying to tell me that they have a history that goes further back? Yes, they have a history that goes way further back. In fact, the Kennedys are descendants from Brian Borough, 